everybody, Gavin Schneider here at Abode Base Real Estate. Today we're going to talk about five closing day surprises and how to avoid them. So the first thing I want to talk about is the final walkthrough. If you're a buyer, you should be doing a final walkthrough, say the day before or two days before the transaction closes. And you want to make sure that it's generally clean, that the fixtures aren't missing, that they haven't damaged walls and doors and windows as the sellers are moving out of the house, all those kind of things. If those items have happened, if things are missing, we need to make sure that we're getting uh, some kind of compensation for them, they're replacing the fridge, whatever it is. As a seller, you also want to do your final walkthrough prior to closing to make sure that you're not leaving anything behind. Because in most instances, if you do leave something behind, it's going to become property of the buyer at the time of closing. And so that ladder you left in the garage, the additional um, wine fridge or the washer and dryer you left behind, whatever it is, if you leave them and it closes, it's theirs, right? Plain and simple. So uh, number two, second closing day surprise that you want to watch out for um, is not everything being signed and ready to close. As a buyer, obviously you'll know if you haven't signed. But what you need to be aware of is has the other party signed? And if they haven't, is there a plan in place for them to sign? Sometimes um, we, and and the same thing goes if you're a seller, right? But sometimes we can become so centered on what our responsibilities are. We just assume that if we've signed, the other party must have signed as well. And that's not always the case. And that's one of the important jobs of real real estate agent is to ensure that the other parties have also signed or are scheduled to sign um, to ensure that the transaction actually closes. And um, this happens a lot more often than you would think. So the third closing day surprise that you wanna watch out for is loan issues. So buyers, do not make any financial changes in your life during the escrow process. Don't buy a new car, don't take out a new loan, don't buy new appliances on your credit cards, Don't even pay off debt without first talking to your lender. All of those things are going to impact um, your credit score, your debt to income, all those kind of things. And the lender is going to check all of that information again prior to closing. They're going to run another credit score check, make sure you have taken on new obligations. They're going to make sure that you're still in the same job, all of that prior to closing. So don't make any financial changes in your life, buyers, until you've actually closed the transaction. Uh, The next step is, number four, um, is issues with title and escrow. So commonly, things are moving along swimmingly, and then all of a sudden, right at the end of the transaction, there's some kind of a cloud on the title. Uh, A a vendor that the seller had repaired the roof has filed a mechanics lien on the property to pay for the roof. Um, There are all of a sudden boundary line disputes between the neighbor and the subject property. The neighbor sees the home is up for sale, they're worried it's going to sell, and the new owners are also going to think the boundary line is A when the boundary line is actually B, and so they put a cloud on the title. The key is is that both parties are just flexible and work through those title and escrow issues to ensure that the property does change hands legally if the buyer is, say, willing to take it subject to that cloud on title, or you work to get that cloud on title removed prior to closing. And then the last thing um, that is tends to be a closing day surprise, or just a surprise in general, is property uh, line issues. And buyers, what I'll tell you is, you know, always assume the fence is yours, right? Unless it's clear and obvious that the fence isn't yours, it's the neighbor's. Just assume it's yours. Assume you're going to have to pay to have it repaired or replaced or moved or whatever the case is. Um, uh, or installed. So often buyers purchase a home and then expect that their neighbors are going to go 50-50 with them on a new fence um, or they just assume that the fence is their neighbors and not theirs and they have to pay to maintain it. It's just one of those gray area things, okay? Could you pay to have a survey done to see who um, uh, actually owns the fence because it's on their property? Yeah, you could, but nine times out of ten the cost of the survey is going to cost more than the cost of the fence. So. Just get your neighbor some beer, talk about it, agree to split the cost of it to some degree, and then move forward. Um, 
Okay, so there you have it. Those are five closing day surprises and a little bit about how to avoid them.